Sasha. Today we're going to be unboxing the Nido XV11 from Nido Robotics. Very exciting. Let's go ahead and open the box here. And the first thing we'll notice, besides the bright orange, is the quick start guide. So if you're one of those kind of people who doesn't like to read manuals, in one, two, three, four easy steps, you know how to use the Nido. So that's very convenient. If we just take a look at the robot itself, pull this out of the box. Notice the needle is wrapped in these plastic formed pieces. So it's pretty well protected when it's shipping. Overall, they did a pretty good job on the shipping and the packaging. The first thing you're going to notice is you've been seeing all the promo videos and screenshots online and even the picture on the box is that the robot's green instead of that silvery kind of chrome color. So this is a sample model. We should see different colors coming out as the unit starts to hit the market. So we look at the front, you'll notice a few features. One thing that's been talked about, the LCD screen, which is backlit when it's on. You've got the soft touch buttons here. You've got the power button right here. This actually functions as your on, off, start and stop button. You've got the bumper in the front, left and right. Got the dustbin right in the middle. Just a little bit of force pops it out. If you notice, it's a fairly large dustbin. And you got a filter right here in the back. And on the filter, there's a little tab. You can easily pull it off. And I mean, the click action is quite nice, so you know exactly when it's clicked in place. Now, one thing to notice also is that if you notice, the vacuum motor is right there, right behind the grill for the filter. And then you have the inlet for the dirt and debris, which is right here in the front, right above the brushes. So the way it's designed, the dustbin is going to fill up from the back forward, which means you maximize the amount of space you have in the dustbin. So you won't have to empty it as regularly. So that was a pretty smart design as well. The other thing you'll notice is just there's a little switch here. So the robot knows the dustbin is in or out. So that's also pretty helpful. Just put a little bit of force, pops back in place. And the last but not least, on the top side of the robot, you have this projection that sticks out. This is actually the laser vision system of the Nido. It's part of what Nido Robotics calls the RPS or Room Positioning System Technology. And this is what enables the Nido to do a systematic cleaning of the room. It uses this to build a map of the area it's cleaning. And then what it does, it goes and does the perimeter, does around all the obstacles in the middle of the room, and then it'll go and clean systematically using that map that's built back and forth, line by line, the open areas. If we look at the back of the unit, we've got the vacuum exhaust port here. And then the two charging terminals, which we'll see after when we look at the charger. Now we flip the robot over, put it down. You've got standard fare on your robotic vacuums. You've got two spring-loaded motors. They're put more or less right in the middle of the robot. And to help it out, they put four casters. You have two at the back, two at the front. Kind of an interesting design. They put two little casters on the actual brush guard. So that's something you see all the time. Um, they're right here. you got two screws there and two screws there. These are actually panels that cover the batteries. So the robot actually runs on two batteries. And they're fairly easy to take out. You just pop those out, keeps them secure. There's a little plug to disconnect, and that's pretty much it. If you notice here at the front, you've got these two little openings. I'm not sure how well you can see them. But those are the cliff sensors. So this robot will do just fine around stairs and different levels. You have a split level, or you got a tile from the kitchen to another area. It will not jump off that and uh, it'll back away. So it's safe that way. And then also, if you notice right there, there's a wall detector. So that should be pretty good in helping it do edging and going around the perimeter of the room. Now you've got the one brush in the front, the one brush uh, system, this robot's cleaning system. And you got two little clips right there. You just press them forward and lift the brush guard up, and the brush guard comes right off. You'll notice the brush guard has a rubbery strip here that acts kind of like a scoop when the robot's moving, helps the brush pick up debris. And you'll notice you've got quite a large brush in the robot. Comes up fairly simply, you just got to grab the idle end, lift it up and pull it, and you'll notice it's belt driven, and it's got teeth, and the brush can fit in either way, so you have no need to worry about putting the brush in backwards and damaging something. It's fairly uh, easy that way. As well, it's got a bearing on either end. They just pull right off, and you can clean them when you need to, it's usually recommended to clean them every cleaning cycle, and then they just 
push right back on. With the brush, you've got this plastic rubbery strip here and all along the brush. And one interesting thing is that the actual tube or shaft of the brush is made of aluminum. So unlike some brushes which are totally rubber, I mean, dirt and dust will stick to it, but this aluminum piece will be fairly easy to clean. So that's a nice feature. And when you're going to put it back in after you know, you've taken it out and cleaned it off, you just got to make sure the bearings are pushed all the way in. And then you just got to slip this brush right into that belt. might take a little bit of practice the first time, but it's fairly easy to get in. You just push it in, get the teeth all lined up, and then drop the other side in. And then you just kind of rotate it, and the belt will center itself. And it's in place. You don't have to worry about coming loose. Put it back in. you got these two clips. Just hook them in the front, line it up, click it in place. It couldn't be easier. And that's pretty much it. So we put this aside. We're going to look at the accessories now that the Neo comes with. And it comes in a separate box. And the presentation is fairly good on this robot and how it's all packaged. Open this up. And the first thing you notice, we've got the Neo user's guide. It's a fairly well-built user's guide. You have to give it to Neo Robotics on that. It's got all the information you need. A table of contents, using the Neato, that's fairly good. Customer service, even got, there's a list in the back of if you never needed to replace a brush or a charger or you wanted to get another user's guide if you ever lost it. Everything's in there with their part number. You got all the information on how to schedule it, how to use it, troubleshooting, how to clean it. So it's a fairly good um, manual. It's a good read and that way it'll help you in terms of taking care of the uh, robot. Another accessory it comes with is this what's called a boundary marker. It's a strip, it's a magnetic strip. Let me just take it out of the bag so you can get a better look at it. And this is used to block off certain areas you don't want the needle to go. And while the needle is able to recognize boundaries and doorways and do them later, so it'll do one room at a time, this is if you want the robot never to go in an area. You can measure out the amount of boundary marker you need. You can cut it to measure, either using an X-Acto or a pair of wire cutters or a pair of scissors and just place it across the opening or the doorway or hallway you don't want the robot to go by and the robot will see it as a wall. It will drive over it and then back right up. And it's pretty easy to put away this stuff. It just sticks to itself. And that's pretty much it. little neat passive device but very uh, useful if you're trying to control where your robot goes. Another thing here, last but not least on this, is the charger at home base. So a fairly large charger but color matches and everything. What you notice here is that you got two spring-loaded contacts, and see, one nice thing is you got quite a long strip for the contacts. So the robot has some flexibility when it's trying to come in. It doesn't have to get it exactly on, but once it touches down with these little contacts in the back, it's good and it'll charge. So it just has to come right up, drive in, and it's got you know quite a bit of leeway in terms of where it can be positioned when it's trying to home in. So that's a nice feature as well. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that you don't have really a lot of cord. Well, people at Neo, it's a pretty smart design. They made the home base open up. And actually, you have more cord all spooled up if you need to let out more. So depending on where your charger and home base are placed, if the, the wall plug is positioned behind the dresser or further away or under a bed somewhere, you have enough cord that you don't have to put the charger somewhere where you can't get to it. The other thing you notice, you've got a slot on either side, so you can have the wire come out on the left or the right, so it's pretty uh, convenient. And then here, what you notice is the charger is actually inside the home base. You can take it out if you want. If for whatever reason you don't want to use the home base, you can just take the charger out, set the home base frame aside, and you can just plug this into the wall and go directly into the needle's charging socket. So the robot wants to turn on. You just plug it right there, and plug it straight into the wall, and you're good to go. And the smart thing about the Neato is if it's not working with the home base, it'll start from where you unplug it, do its cleaning, and then come back right there. So it'll come right back to where the charging wire is. So once it's done, you can plug it right back in. So that's pretty much it. An exciting new robot. Looks very promising. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach us through the forum or through the support center. I'm Vahan with Robot Shop. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching Robot Shop TV. More details on the Neato will be uh, on our website. You can find it at robotshop.com. And the Neato will be available for sale in August.
pretty smart little robot.